What's going on guys, this is Tim back at you again to bring another video and today we're going to talk about a general topic of why you stop seeing progress in the gym. Before we get started, I want to ask you guys to like and subscribe and let me know what you think of my videos so far. Comment down below what you want to see in the future. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to share this video with others as well and let's get this channel growing and let's get started. So basically the gist of what we're going to talk about today is why you stop seeing results in the gym. Whether that be you stop seeing muscular strength gains or you stop seeing muscular hypertrophy gains, which basically means muscular growth. Maybe you stop seeing a little bit of toning in your muscles as well. <clears throat> well, say that you started a workout program and after the first eight weeks, you saw amazing progress. You thought that this is an amazing program, whoever wrote me this program knew what they were doing, but eventually you start to not see results anymore. And this is because you hit a lifting plateau. Tell me if how I describe this sounds like you or someone that you know. So you've done the same workout split repetitively, the same exercises and the same variation for months. You've done the same weight because you can't seem to increase weight and you've done the same exact rep range from eight to 12, typically the same weight, whatever you feels right to you and you stop around those numbers. And because of this, you're not seeing muscle gain. You basically hit a lifting plateau where you're not seeing any more muscle gain. You're not seeing any more progress and you really don't know where to start to change things up. So basically your workout program needs certain modifications that are actually a lot simpler than we think. Oftentimes it just seems so simple to look at one exercise, look at the weight and look at the reps that you're gonna do and just perform it. Now, there's other things that come into play here such as rest breaks. The amount of time that you give your muscles to stop and take a break is actually very important depending on your phase of training in general. But in this case, I'm just gonna talk about hypertrophy resistance training. So your rest for this phase of training should be between 30 seconds and one minute, typically around 45 seconds. So if you actually apply this principle to your training, you'll notice that these rest breaks go by a lot quicker than you think and the workout gets a lot harder. So step one is to bear down on your rest breaks, make sure that you're resting the adequate time, not too long, don't let your muscles completely go cold, no more talking in between sets. Step two would be to introduce supersets into your training. Now you can do supersets with two different muscle groups or you can do two exercises that work different heads of the muscle. For example, you can do two different types of curls. You can do hammer curls or curls on an easy bar with your hands closer together to work your brachialis and the outside of your bicep and then you can switch it up and do a set of curls with your arms wider out and work inside of your biceps. Either way, you're working the biceps just from different angles. I also just did a video on supersets, four great supersets to add to your regimen and if you guys are interested, I will link that in the top right. Step three is to just change your rep range on your workouts. If you find yourself training for 12s every single time and doing the same weight every time, try upping the weight and then going for eight reps. Really force out some reps too. So maybe eight is still easy and you can force out to 10, then you can increase the weight again and then go down to eight. And that's basically the process of increasing weight on your isolation exercises or just any exercise that you're trying to increase muscle hypertrophy. Another thing is you can go past 12 reps on training. Uh, there's this myth that you want to solely train from about 6 to 12 reps to increase hypertrophy. However, if you start to force out reps at the end of your set, you will still see hypertrophy gain and you'll find yourself being able to up the weight and then go for that specific rep range if that's what you want. However, what you don't want to do is focus on one number such as 12, find yourself sort of fatigued and then stop because you got to 12. You also don't want to pace yourself and do less reps on the first couple sets with less weight so that you can reach the full amount of volume that you want to train for. Lastly, you want to change the tempo in which you do certain workouts. You want to start to train eccentrics. The eccentric movement of a lift is basically the lowering portion. Say that you are doing bicep curls, you curl the weight up, that is the concentric, and then lowering the weight back down, really stretching out the muscle, that is the eccentric. So a fun fact is that the most damage to the fibers, the micro tears that stimulate muscle growth is done during the eccentric and we can actually lower more weight than we can lift. This means that if you can bicep curl 35s and that's the highest you can go for 10 reps, well, you can probably lower 45 pound weights for 10 reps as well. So that being said, certain ways to train are to just use momentum to complete the concentric. Sure, that's cheating a rep, but if you really slow down the eccentric and utilize this time, you can get a lot of time under tension and do a lot more good damage to your muscles and stimulate more muscle growth. It's also very important that we take 48 hours between each muscle group to rest and let that muscle recover. You want to take rest days because you don't want to overtrain your muscle because if you overtrain your muscle, you'll definitely plateau and maybe even lose gains in the process. 
Obviously, if you look at it from a scientific perspective, it's not quite as simple as I explained it here, but for someone who just wants a quick fix to get out of their exercise plateau and to start to see progress again, these are the principles you just need to add to your training on every exercise to get that done. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know how this helps you. Make sure to like and subscribe and share my videos. I appreciate all you guys. Thank you for all the support and I'll see you in the next video.